All right, welcome everyone. Today we're gonna to be talking about the pleaser saboteur. We're gonna go in depth. One of the reasons that I'm starting with the pleaser and the hyperachiever is because they're the two saboteurs that I am most familiar with. Um, so we're going to go over it. And then for those of you that are in the class, we will actually go into a discussion afterwards, but I wanted to record this. So anyone who couldn't make the class today would have a chance to see it. So uh, I want to just make sure for the purposes of the video that everybody knows that everything I'm gonna be talking today was created by Shirzad Shamin, who wrote the book, Positive Intelligence. And I'm currently in the process of getting certified in his program and have been running boot camps um, to take people through the uh, mental fitness process that's talked about in the book. And our agenda today is we're gonna dive into the pleaser saboteur in depth. And we're gonna start with how the saboteur develops. And then we're gonna to move to the characteristics, the thoughts, the feelings, what we call the justification lies or what the saboteur will tell you um, to make sure that you keep it around, uh, the impact on yourself and the impact on others and how you can do a few things to coach yourself to shift when you find yourself hijacked. So for those of you that are just coming in, I'm recording first and then we're gonna discuss. So how the pleaser saboteur develops, they start out kind of naturally caring and loving and compassionate, and they really enjoy close relationships. But at some point in um, their childhood, they begin to notice or worry or fear that others will not automatically be there if they need support. So they have to figure out what to do about this. And one of the things that they learn is that if they're the one that is being supportive or pleasing to others, then they tend to be able to keep them close, at least temporarily. So that leads to the development of the pleaser saboteur. And uh, the characteristics of a person who is hijacked by the pleaser habit, saboteur often, uh, they tend to have a strong need to be liked by people and they attempt to really earn people's uh, affection or like by helping them or pleasing them or rescuing them or flattering them. Uh, they tend to need frequent reassurance by others that they actually like them, that they accept them, that they, you know, that they love them. So they're the kind of person that sort of needs to check in, you know, do you still love me? That type of thing. Um, they have a really, really hard time expressing their own needs openly and directly. So they try to get their needs met indirectly. In other words, they won't say, hey, I need a hug, but they might sort of go and hug you and hope that you hug them back. Um, or they really want you to hang out with them. So they do like five things for you, bringing you presents and stuff, and then hoping that you'll be so grateful that you'll hang out with them. So um, these are some extreme examples, but just you probably recognize them in some people you know, and maybe you recognize them in yourself sometimes when you're feeling insecure, especially uh, when someone who is hijacked by a pleaser feels insecure, their energy can come across as a little bit needy. Um, and they can almost force their help on others. So they can almost sometimes feel intrusive, like, oh, let me do this for you or jump in and help without really being asked. The general thoughts that go on in a mind that is hijacked by a pleaser is that in order for me to be a good person, I should be putting the needs of others ahead of my own. And the, they also often will have thoughts about how much it bothers them when people don't notice or care about what they've done for them. And um, they can feel that other people are selfish and ungrateful. They often feel like they give away too much and don't think of themselves enough. And they're probably true, that's probably true. Um, they often feel like they can make anyone like them. I used to do this. I actually used to think to myself, I can make anyone like me. It's like I had my little survival strategy down. This was a long time ago when I didn't realize it was a survival strategy. Um, and then sort of, well, if I don't help people, if I don't rescue them, then who will? The, you know, so they kind of feel like they have to. Um, 
So as far as feelings go, uh, people who are hijacked with the pleaser saboteur have a really hard time expressing their needs. It feels really selfish to want anything. Um, they're really, really worried that if they ask for their needs to be met, other people will drive them away. So um, I don't like this about what you did. I really want you to do this. They just sort of assume that others will say, well, gosh, you know, if you don't do it my way, then I really don't want to be around you. And they really believe this. Um, and so even though on the surface, they're really nice and accommodating, underneath, they tend to get really resentful because they feel that others take them for granted. Um, and they don't really express that resentment to other people, but it sort of leaks out. Anyway, the justification that the pleaser saboteur uh, gives you to tell you that it needs to stay around is, oh, you're being very selfless. You don't do this for yourself. And you know, the world would be a better place if everyone was like you and just gave and gave and gave. So, well, this is a great intention. It has a real negative imp impact both on the person who has the pleaser saboteur and on the people that they're in relationships with. So um, it can really jeopardize your ability to take care of your own needs, emotionally, physically, and financially, because you're giving everything that you have and five times as much of that to everyone else. Um, it can lead to burnout and resentment that others don't give back as much. Others can develop dependence rather than learn to take care of themselves. So this is the classic codependent thing. I give and I give and I give, and I give people fish, I don't teach them to fish. And I feel obligated, like it's my responsibility to take care of others. And when others constantly ask me for things because they're so used to me giving them those things, I kind of feel manipulative, ma manipulated or I feel guilty when they're doing things by themselves. I can completely remember instances where um, someone would ask me for something and I wouldn't want to do it. And I might sort of say no or blow them off, but then I would just be overcome with so much guilt that I would go and do it anyway. Uh, they can drive, they can actually drive people away by being too intrusive and trying to help them, which is kind of the paradox. So every saboteur is sort of a paradox. The one thing that they promise you is the one thing that they actually uh, prevent you from having. So what the pleaser promises you is that other people will like you that you can make anybody like you by giving a lot to them. But if you're really hijacked and you force your help on other people, you can actually drive other people away because they feel really intruded upon and violated by your attempts to help them. And also they don't really trust you that much because they're not sure if you're gonna really tell them the truth um, about what you want. I actually have a friend um, in my life who is, uh, very much hijacked by a pleaser. And I know it was really good for me also having this as a saboteur because I was able to examine how I felt when this other person was around. And what I very quickly learned is anytime I asked this person for a favor, they would always say yes, but then something would come up later because they would just overwhelm themselves by saying yes to too many people. So they either forget or they would, um, not really want to. So they would come and they would do the thing, but you could tell they weren't really invested in it. And it just got so uncomfortable for me that I stopped asking them for anything because I thought I can never trust that they're really going to want to do what I asked them to do. So I better not ask them anything. And so I tended to start avoiding this person when I wanted comfort or when I wanted help, because I just wasn't sure if they were really 100% into it. So if you have a pleaser saboteur, how can you intercept it? So one of the things to really understand is that empathizing and giving to others is a wonderful sage choice that can be your greatest strength personally and professionally, but the sage choice to give is always unconditional. So when you're giving, you're never thinking about making deposits into the love piggy bank. You know, there's actually joy in the giving and you're not thinking in the least bit about return. Now, the pleaser saboteur will often hijack you and fool you into thinking that you really don't want anything in return when you're giving, but really there's a hidden agenda. 
the hidden agenda often is that you want to be loved, you want to be liked, you want to be appreciated, and or you want to be seen as a giving person. So it's ultimately about you. It's not about the other person. You have to be really, really honest with yourself because if you're getting triggered by other people not appreciating you, then that's a sure sign that your giving is coming from a saboteur and it's not coming from Sage. Other things that you can do to really help move out of the please your saboteur mode. It's practicing receiving with grace. So when someone gives you a compliment, instead of saying, oh, no, 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 say thank you and take in the joy of that compliment. Um, if receiving feels selfish, consider the oxygen mask on the plane. I always do this with my clients that, um, that have a hard time. They give, 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 give. And I always use the, what do they ask you to do on the plane when the oxygen masks come down? Do you put the oxygen mask on your own face first or do you put your oxygen mask on the face of the child next to you first? Some of them get really confused and stuck here. So it takes them a minute to remember, oh, they tell me to put the mask on myself first. And then I say, okay, what if you don't? What if you run to help the person next to you first and you put oxygen on them before you put it on themselves? And thinking through this process is really helpful for someone who's hijacked with a pleaser because then they, they begin to realize how if they don't put their own oxygen mask on, they actually become a burden to others instead of helpful to others. So the person that doesn't get enough oxygen starts making really bad decisions. And so all the other people on the plane won't only have to help the child next to them, but then they're going to have to help them as well. Allowing others to give to you will make them feel good and can itself be a form of giving. So these are actually two things that really helps me, the oxygen mask, remembering that, but also remembering how good it feels when I give to other people. It made me remember that when I graciously receive something, how much joy I'm giving someone. And I remember really learning this when I saw at Christmas people watching me opening the Christmas gifts and when I was truly happy how happy they were. And I realized that giving a gift to someone and having them really be happy about that is just, it's the greatest joy and allowing other people to have that joy by giving to you is wonderful. So that was something that helped turn me around and kind of shift out of my pleasing mode a little bit. Um, the other thing to really be honest with yourself about is the pleaser's way of filling the void of being unloved will never succeed. The only solution is unconditional self-love. So loving yourself is part of the journey of intercepting the pleaser saboteur and moving into sage mode. Um, you can practice boosting both your empathize power, which is unconditional self-love, and your activate power, which is fierce self-care and boundaries. It's really, really hard to love yourself when you are hijacked by the pleaser, which is why really putting extra energy into giving yourself sometimes is necessary. And um, I love this last bullet here. Learn to say no. Any no is a yes to something else. Okay, so now we're going to stop the video. For those of you who are just listening to this on recording, please know you can reach out to me with any questions and any thoughts. And what you might want to do right now is just take a couple minutes to think about the answers to these questions for yourself. Who do you know that fits this profile? When does this show up for you? And what do you want to focus on? to intercept this saboteur inside you and shift to sage. Most people have a little bit of pleaser in them, especially women, because we're sort of grown up in a culture that tells us that we should be loving and giving. So usually all of us have a little bit of this inside us. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video now. Uh, for those of you in the class, we are now going to have our discussion.